Mark and baby Shearer as well. I'm surprised we'll be doing that. No. Wow. Look who we joined by. I've actually walked past him once already. It's Frank Smith, but I'm going to say you look like, um, you know, that schizophrenic in Split. Thanks. No, I don't. I don't know who you're talking about, but I hope, what has he got? Great jawline, great hairline. Yeah. He's a he's a monster and a serial killer. Uh, a really, really good film. If you're into horrors, it's one to watch. But welcome back to Frank Smith. What's with the uh, new look? People are usually going over abroad to get implants, and you're just shaving all yours off. I just took it all out. It's the start of the Turkish, you know, hair transplant. No, I'm uh, no, I was at dinner and my hair was annoying me because it was really hot. And I said, should I just shave it off? And they, we said, yeah. So we went back, to the, went back to the villa afterwards and they shaved my hair off. That is as simple as that. Very bold, but very, very noticeable. That noticeable, I didn't recognise you. But we are here. We are back again. This time it's knockout chaos kind of like 1990s, 1980s theme. Talk to us about getting this fight done, because we did think he was going to fight Wilder. Joshua, that is. Yeah, look, the, you know, obviously the Wilder fight was, was the focus. You know, he obviously didn't get the win against Joseph Parker, and I'm so happy for Joseph Parker, because I've loved him for a long time, got on well with him for a long time, so if it was anyone was going to do it, good to see Joseph Parker do it, but yeah, the Wilder fight was one we were working hard on, and uh, this is a massive commercial fight. You know, very much the focus is still for AJ to become world champion again. Those belts are tied up, and I think this is the big fight that people want to see. And uh, you know, people are going to draw a lot of comparisons and say this is what happened in the Fury fight. And you know, I think people were very interested in seeing this fight. And I will say, yes, we are, and it's because of the Fury fight happening. I was one of them that went into the Ngannou versus Fury versus Ngannou and literally thought, why am I even watching this? It's pointless. And then we saw something different. And that then, I guess, got the taste buds going for this fight. 100%. You know, um, Francis Ngannou, no one, you know, some people will say they did, but I don't think anyone... But the reality for the reason for that is because he'd never had a professional boxing fight before. Um, but the truth is at this level, at this, you know, when you look at him, the, the size of him, you know, anyone can be hurt. And he showed that against Tyson Fury. I actually thought it was, it was closer than people see. And a lot of people said they thought Francis Ngannou won it easy. I thought it was a closer fight than that. I think it was more people shocked that Francis managed to do what he did. Um, but, you know, it's going to be an interesting fight. And uh, anything can happen in this division, in the heavyweight division. That's why we love it. Obviously, this is the first time I've spoke to you in a while. That partnership, fair enough, I understand His Excellency. Turkey Al Sheikh is the man. He is what I would call the puppet master. He's the one with the strings, he's the ones with the money. He's the ones that's getting everyone to work together. But how has that relationship really been? Because it's Queensbury and Matchroom have not been feuding, but they've been competitors for such a long time. So to rub away that line that was almost cemented in the sand and to work together, how's that been? Yeah, look, obviously, as you say, His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh has done a tremendous job. And a great thing for the sport of boxing and it's going to mean the sport continues to grow and build and develop and long may it continue i think you know uh the when you talk about the relationship a lot of it has been driven by this kind of stuff and he said this you said this they said this and the reality is we will always remain competitors that is that's just we're all we you know we're competitors we will always remain that in business um but when you look at right, look at other promoters golden boy for example you see the back and forth between eddie and oscar you know, I speak to Eric Gomez very often. We made the fight with Mungia and Ryder in two weeks' time. So although we're competitors, although there's a lot of public spats, the reality is we can do good business. You know, I've got on with George for a long time. First time I've spent much time with Frank, you know, was obviously in Saudi. And it's, you know, all this stuff, all a bit of fun and games. And sometimes can go a bit too far. We're all guilty of saying things. But if we can make fights happen that are good for our fighters, then that's great. One of the things that's been mentioned up there um, Saudi wants to look at possibly making Matchroom versus Queensbury with the fighters, something that really made my ears prick up because often when people are on different networks they don't tend to fight each other unless there's a belt or a high stake involved. If, you was to, if I was to say, okay then, name me five fighters or four fighters from Matchroom who you'd like to put up against Queensbury fighters, who would they be and why? I'm, I'm not going to say it, because if I say something and it doesn't happen, people will be like, 
who said this and uh, it, you know it hasn't materialized i think there's great fights to be made there's so many great fights to be made you know we've got 120 fighters under the matchroom stable um and you know i think you'll see some tremendous fights and it's it's good to see and it's going to be interesting people are going to buy into it you know you have eddie and frank maybe they go in their corners as well maybe that would be good yeah maybe the trainers they can be trainers as well I know it's something that you possibly uh, can't discuss, but it's something that's been in the papers at the moment. Something that's it's still interesting because it's still to do with the sport, and it's mentioned obviously Eddie having a uh, matchroom having a legal batter, battle against boxer in regards to contracts once again. But this time, it's not Lawrence Acoli; it's now Joshua Boatsi. Talk to us a little bit about that so it can be clear. I know something's mentioned about matching rights. I understand there's legal privilege and you can't go into detail, but just a summary of what's happened and why. Yeah, look, it's not a new, a new thing. It's something that's been going on uh, for a while. You know, we have to defend our position when we've got a legal position, when we've worked hard to do, you know, to deliver for people, and you know, we just have to defend our position. There's not much detail I can really go into it, um, you know, because as you say, it's a, it's going to be discussed and dealt with in a legal forum, um, and you know, we. You know, at the end of the day, we just want to defend our position, and that's what we'll continue to do. Um, you know, I saw quotes, feedback to it, but you know, I leave it to people to deal with that side of things. Our focus is to keep building the sport, uh, keep delivering for the, for the fighters we do promote. But at the same time, when you work hard for a fighter, when you deliver for a fighter, time and time again, you just want your contractual position to be appreciated. You know, and that, that's what it comes down to. Being in tough positions like that, does it then create, like, I don't know, tarring every fighter with the same brush, sort of like matchroom tightening up on their fighters because things like these can happen. We always know that there's always someone whispering in someone's ear. That's just life, as it were. But these are legal commitments and obligations that you've got because you're tied into something. Does that mean now matchroom are going to really tighten up their ship? And like I said, it, it could... You could end up tiring fighters or being a bit more, I don't know, rigid with them. Like you said, you, you treat your fighters like your family. Yeah, you have to. You know, we, you always hope that you, you know, when you work hard for someone. Look, I always say AJ is a perfect example of someone who has stuck by us, shown us loyalty throughout. And look, like, I'm not saying it's because of us, but look at where, as a group, we are. You know, he's trusted us. She's trusted the process and to do us to do our job. And, you know, he's the biggest commercial star in the sport. You know, showing loyalty, and that's not just to us. You know, I say like Daniel Dubois with Frank Warren, for example. Look at what he's done in the sport, the money he's made in the sport. So I'm not just talking about us ourselves. There's other fighters that have shown loyalty to someone and have been rewarded on that basis. If someone says to you, you're the people, you would do anything for them. You know, and if you work really hard for someone, there is a personal level to it where if you work really hard for someone, you get to know someone, you deliver, and then they go, right, thanks for it. Like, look, that's business, that's life. But at the same time, I believe we're the best at what we can do. There's always going to be one offs here or there. Someone goes, I'll do this. I'll... There's always going to be people whispering in their ear. The grass is always greener. When it comes down to it, the reality is they're in the best possible place. But unfortunately, the way life goes, people have to go and make mistakes. And people have done that, and people, I'm sure, in the future will do that. Um, but it's not so much... Look, if it was the other way around and people saying, you didn't deliver upon your obligations to us, well, that, what? That's, you know, you never hear that. So if we turn around and said, we're not going to do X, Y, Z that's in your contract, oh, well, why? Just don't feel like it. What, what view would people have of us? So all we're doing is defending our position for the rights we've... You know, invested in, and you have to remember as well. Boxing's a hard sport, and, and boxers deserve to make as much money as possible. Boxers deserve a huge amount of credit, but at the same time, you invest a lot of money into a boxer before you actually see any return. Is the is the truth, and that's that's at all levels. That's trainers, that's managers, that's promoters, um, and yeah, I think sometimes you know you just. You have to defend your position. You can't just be walked over, and we won't be walked over, especially when we've done our job. One thing that I will say that I did notice is uh, Craig Richards being in the matchroom gym for some time. I think he was trained initially by his Peter Sims originally. Uh, he's now joined forces with uh, Shane McGuigan. We know that the majority of Shane McGuigan's fighters are with boxing, except for Ellie Scottney. She's with yourself. Um, I did speak. Uh, online with um, Savage Down from Boxer and it, it just came out because I saw him in the gym I was like is he going to Boxer is that a fighter that you're still keeping 
as yeah, in no. Craig Richards. Yeah, yeah look, Craig's we've had, Craig we've had a great relationship with, delivered some great fights for Craig Richards and will continue to do so. You know, I've been speaking to uh, Jake McGuigan around plans for him, you know, so it's very much set. Look, he's, although he hasn't boxed for a while, you know, we've delivered the opportunity. He's obviously had a few injuries, unfortunately, that he's been out for. So, you know, we're, our plan is to get him out as soon as possible. We're working through that now. You know, he's settling in, obviously, with Shane in the gym, but, yeah, very much focused on still delivering for Craig. And, uh, look, we have a great relationship with Craig and we'll continue to do so, like I say. Yeah, it's just one of them things that I thought I'd ask. So this fight then in Saudi, a lot is on the line. Like I said, Ngannou is somebody that's not, he's, he, he wants to win. He genuinely wants to win. He seems like he's enjoying being in the boxing world. He seems to be getting more accolades in the boxing world than he was when he was doing uh, the mixed martial arts on the UFC. The winner, it seems like His Excellency has got a winner stays on mentality. The risk now that you put in Anthony Joshua in into this fight because it's not a shot out, is it? It's not a shot out win for him, is it? Yeah, but I think the reality is no fight at this level of the heavyweight division is a shot out win. Every every heavyweight fight at this level that you want to be involved in is going to bring its challenges. You know, different challenges. I'm sure. You know, different fighters that we could look at would bring different challenges for Anthony Joshua. But you know, that's what we're all in it for. And especially like say outs the heavyweight division is like no other it can all be over in seconds um, and that's why people tune in that's why people watch it but he's not in the sport to have easy nights he wants to you know look he's, he's never shied away from a challenge and will never do that um, the focus is very much to become undisputed champion again or world champion again um, and i'm sure we'll see the biggest nights yeah we look forward to it listen it's been an absolute pleasure i do it does suit you thank you does suit you and uh and so, no, I look like a psychopath out of the movie i like psychopaths but that's another story listen it's been a pleasure abs of october red with the lovely frank smith lovely to see you thank you yeah it suits you Cheers.